Got your snacks? Are you ready? Let's talk about speed. I feel the need. The need for... I'm not going there. Let's not, let's not do that. Okay, so why is connection speed so very important when we talk about VPNs? Well, I mean, obviously, people want the speed they paid for. Now, let's talk a bit about how VPNs work to talk about how all of that affects speed. This is a standard internet connection, or no VPN. This is the user's computer. This is the internet service provider that may be, well, in my case, Telmex or EC. In the US, it could be AT&T or God knows what. And this is the whole internet with a little web page being displayed. And so basically your computer says, I want to access the internet. The internet service provider says, mm, well, okay. And they give you internet access and let you see web pages and all that good stuff. With a VPN connection, everything goes a little bit differently. So you've got your computer and on your computer is what will be called the VPN client or the program that lets you connect to the virtual private network. Then the traffic goes to your internet service provider, then to a VPN server, which is like an extra stop along the way to the internet. And then you go back, it goes all the way out to the internet again. Now you can see these green dots. That's the encrypted da data. All the data that goes between the virtual private network client and the virtual private network server gets encrypted so that anyone who tries to access your data along this path can't read it. <laughs> Not without the encryption key. And those are very hard to break these days. You need supercomputers, clusters of supercomputers to do it. Obviously, things are a little bit more complex overall, but that's basically how it works. Now, here's the thing. Speed and quality vary widely <laughs> the, uh, between different VPNs and internet service providers and everything uh, involved in that whole process affects the actual speed of the connection. Even the fastest virtual private network though, because there are more steps along the way, even the fastest one will be slower than your original internet connection. However, if the virtual private network is good and the overall connection is good, the difference should barely be noticeable. Noticeable in some cases, but barely. But let's get, ba uh, get back and talk about what actually affects speed specifically. Here's, there's your geographical proximity to the server. Plain old distance uh, between your computer, your ISP servers, and the VPN server that you're connected to. Because if you're using, if you're say in Russia and you're using a VPN to connect to the US, that is a long way away, whether via satellite or underground sea cables or whatnot. And sheer distance slows down speed, plain and simple. Then there's the server technology, different uh, VPNs, uh, different uh, uh, run diff like sort of different kinds of so uh, software, different kinds of technology. And obviously the newer, faster, better ones will be newer, faster, better, generally speaking. And then there's server vacancy or how crowded a VPN server is. If there's a lot of traffic on the server, then your traffic will be slowed down. That's just, uh, well, it's literally physics. <laughs> It's literally physics. All right. Now let's talk about some practical things you can do to speed up your VPN connection. Well, for starters, you can use a better VPN. <laughs> now, which VPNs are better? Uh, that's what we're trying to find out here. So, you know, that's why we review them. But one that's doing very well at the moment is ExpressVPN. And then you can, of course, connect to a closer server. Physical distance affects internet speed straight up. If you're in Russia connecting to the US through a VPN, that's really gonna do a number on your uh, internet connection. Whether your access, uh, you know, your internet service goes through satellite or undersea cables, it's gonna be at least a good few milliseconds, if not whole seconds of worth of difference. This doesn't help you, of course, if you want to watch, say, Netflix from a specific country 
in your country. So going back to that example, you're in Russia, you want to see American Netflix. Uh, connecting to a server that's a lot closer, say, in England or Spain or whatnot, that's not going to help you. But if you're just trying to keep your connection secure or generally anonymize your internet presence, then yes, uh, connecting to a closer server will make a big difference. Also, you can of course try a different server in the country of your choice. A a big VPNs will have several servers in their country, in the countries they serve, or in the countries where they have servers. Say in the U.S., you could find there's a lot of difference between picking a server in L.A. or a server in New York. Not to mention, some servers will just be more crowded than others. Then, of course, you can use the Quick Connect slash Smart Location feature. Now, what does Quick Connect do exactly? Well, it's not always called Quick Connect or Smart Location, but different VPNs, such as ExpressVPN as seen here, they will try to connect you to the fastest server they can find or the closest server they can find based on location, and some will split the difference. Uh, basically what it does is it helps you find faster connections, period. But it will not help you or read your mind if you want to watch Netflix in a specific country, for example. You need to choose a server manually there. It's best for people who are more interested in security or uh, and anonymizing the presence on, uh, online, that sort of thing, while also maintaining fast internet speeds. Now, a couple of other things you can do. You can change the security protocol. Now, what is the security protocol. It's how the traffic is encrypted and how everything gets sent from one server to another. And different VPNs do it in different ways. And changing how your VPN does that can change your internet speed. Uh, There are also advanced security features on some VPNs that basically run your traffic through two VPN servers instead of just one. That's great for security or... It's okay for security at least, but it will not give you faster internet. It'll slow things down. Now, let's take a a quick look at some of the other things that affect speed. A lot of VPNs will advertise unlimited data transfer and you gotta look, you gotta look for that. You gotta watch out for that because it is not the same as unlimited bandwidth. Unlimited data transfer, transfer, just means that you can uh, you know, download as much data as you want, but it does not say how fast you can download the data you, can, you want. Most major VPNs will offer this. It's fairly standard. Any VPN that doesn't have unlimited data transfer can be safely said to be bad, <laughs> or at least not great. Another thing that affects speed is bandwidth throttling. Well, honestly, mostly uh, VPNs themselves don't do a lot of this, thankfully. But if your internet service provider is throttling your connection, you can use a VPN to sort of dodge that because uh, some internet service providers will literally slow down your internet if they see you're watching a lot of Netflix or if they see you're doing a bit of torrenting or any any peer-to-peer file sharing for that matter. And uh, thankfully, this is not something I run into here in Mexico, but... (laughs) Elsewhere, it's a major problem. It should be noted that mobile carriers will definitely do that sort of thing, unfortunately. Um, All the time. (laughs) They're constantly throttling. Uh, VPN can help you get around that somewhat, but mostly mobile carriers actually just throttle after you've used a certain amount for the month, period. So uh, VPN won't help you there, necessarily. I'm afraid, I'm sorry to say. That's about it for our discussion on speed. I hope that was helpful. We're going to move on to access next. So stay tuned and don't change the channel. Or do if you need a break. Just saying.